Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I feel like playing we're putting on a really cool event for the average player, providing you've got 15 void shards. Now, a lot of people are probably like, damn, that's still a lot, and it is. But 15 void shards for a guaranteed champion is by far the best um like champion chase event i think i've seen raid do uh, apart from maybe a couple of like the christmasy type stuff so we're going to do a guide today on a salah the mourner who is going to be the champion that you can get over the weekend this is coming on sunday basically on sunday there's still according to all of the info that i've got there's still a two times chance to get void epics and legendaries from void shards and at the same time when you pull your 15th void shards you're guaranteed Ursala the Mourner. So let's do a guide on her. I think she's probably, she's one of the best revivers in the game. Full stop. One of the best. Um, she's up there with a ton of legendary reviver type champions. So, you know, if you think about the absolute best revivers, you've got an Arbiter. I think her revive skill is better than Arbiter's. Uh, we've got a Seafy. She only revives one champion, albeit her revive skill is awesome. Um, who else do we use for revives? Duchess is probably the most well known for being absolutely OP as a reviver, uh, wherever she is, Duchess. Now, Duchess's revive skill is not as good as Ursala's revive skill. And Duchess is not, that's what she's in there for. Duchess is in there for a revive. The difference between them is that Duchess is smacking a nice 1288 base defense, 2200. Um, 22,000, sorry, HP. Whereas when we slap onto Ursala, who, by the way, is freaking awesome looking as well, like Dark Martyr look, um, she's only got a base defense of 936. Ah, oh, that's literally like the only thing that I don't like about this champion is her base defense is low because all of her abilities are about being the one that survives. Yeah, she's the one that survives. And if she cannot survive, then her her kind of base of her kit is let down. So she's got a good base speed, an okay base HP pool. We don't care about her base attack, really. She's not in there for damage. But her base defense is on the low side, which is disappointing. But I guess she can't have it all because her kit is amazing. So let's talk through what she can do then. A1, it's got a bit of a turn meter decrease. We're going to build accuracy into a kit anyway for our A2. So this is just a nice to have. Um, where do I see this really playing in? in? You've got, what, 55% if you book her. Honestly, if you manage to book the other skills and you've not landed a single book here yet, I wouldn't book this skill. I think the difference between a 40% chance and a 55, it's like, well, whatever. I, I don't, this isn't the skill that I care about on this champion. So I would not, um, I would not book this any further if I'd already landed my books in the other two steals. And she does love a book. That's one of her negatives, I guess. Um, so 40% chance of decreasing turn meter. Books up to 55. It's only a 10 meter drop. So the only place that I really see this being effective uh, is if you're in the arena and you're trying to mess up somebody's skill order. But honestly, 10% turn meter drop probably still means that whatever their order was is going to continue. You might go and hit the person that's going to drop your defense like a a um madame and try and swing madame behind the nuka it's quite an interesting concept if you're going to use the a1 um and and just mess flip around their turn order slightly but generally uh this is just like a nice little extra um icing on the cake rather than a main part of a kit certainly in in dungeons where you're trying to take on bosses like any of the doom tower bosses ice golem spider finite then of course a little bit of turn meter drop great but it's it's not a big thing this is a good skill a2 three turn cooldown when booked you kind of do want to book this you do really want to book this um i guess it's not a necessity four turn cooldown depends what you're going to use it for if you're going to use it in the arena then you probably would keep this unbooked and wouldn't really care about it um if you're going to use it in dungeons, it's a nice to have booked. Okay, nice to have, but not a necessity. 75% chance books to 100 of placing decrease attack. Most enemies in most waves of content are attack based. Like the majority are attack based. So 
This reduces the damage that's coming into you. It also gives your, your damage dealers a nice buff. And it's on a 310 cooldown. So because it's on a relatively low cooldown, you could actually put her in a stun set pretty effectively and get stuns out of her A2. Pretty effective. Um, but this is what she's all about then. So this ability to book here only unlocks after you ascend her. So I would say ascend first, then try and book. This is where you absolutely would love a book to go if you're going to use it outside of the arena. It's on a six turn cooldown, a revive skill. You book it down to five. Okay. And on a five turn cooldown, this is a really solid skill. So what she got going on here, revives all dead allies. Awesome. With 75% HP, that's huge. That's massive. Um, and fills her turn meters by 50%. That's also massive. Like these, this revive is probably, if it stops there, it's one of the best epic revives in the game. But she also then goes on to place increased defense and strengthen on all allies for three turns. So for three turns is massive. That's such a long time to have strengthen and increased defense. Those two buffs together, it just means that you've got tons less damage coming in on you. Strengthen straight up, 25% less damage. Straight up. It's the best buff in the game. Um, the cool thing about Ursula as well is that you don't have to have dead people for this to work. She'll just go ahead and do it. In fact, she does it as her, her primary skill if you don't set skills. I'm not sure if that's the best thing to do. But honestly, strengthen and increase defense for three turns is massive. It just takes a while to come back to it. So awesome kit, really strong. And you'll notice as well, even though I've said it, I'm going to say it again. She increases defense and she increases attack. There's not many champions in the game that do the two. And what that means is, if you've got defense-based champions on your team, she's buffing their damage. And if you've got attack-based champions, she's buffing their damage. So she's not just a champion that's going to reduce damage coming into you. She also is a really effective buffer of your damage. So really cool kit. Really cool. Um, she's got a speed aura in Doom Tower, which is nice. So I can see her effectively being run in Doom Tower waves. A lot of the Doom Tower bosses. Um, a lot of the dungeons. Massively in the arena. Um, I wouldn't say she's really a clan boss champion. Albeit this skill is okay for clan boss. But on a 5 turn cooldown. I think, I think you'd have to build her too fast to make her really effective. But she does have a decrease attack. Three turn cooldown. Goes on for two turns. This potentially, if you book it to 100% and you get the book on the cooldown. She could be your decrease attack champion. But you have to worry about the 3% chance that you're going to get a resist. You do not need decrease attack on for the stun hit. It doesn't make any difference. So as long as you've got decrease attack on for both AoE hits, actually she could come in and do that job, which is not a bad option. So if you're struggling for a decrease attack, or if you want a secondary one, if you want like a, a fail safe, then a Sala can do that for you. Um, in terms of masteries then, so I've, I've done a masteries in a sense of Basically, anything outside of Clan Boss. She doesn't do damage. Okay, none of her, her attacks hit hard. So forget the offense tree. The only reason you might take offense is if you want more damage. And if you do, it's because you're taking Warmaster. That's the only reason. Nothing else is worth while in a kit towards uh, offense tree. So I've gone for accuracy into additional stats. Uh, I've taken rapid response for more. Uh, turn meter when buffs wear off. I've taken Evil Eye because we're going to build it with accuracy for our A2. So you may as well get the single target da um, turn meter reduction with the A1. We've got um, Spirit Haste in case people are dying because we want her to rotate back to a revive as quick as possible. And then we've got Lasting Gifts which gives us a chance to extend buffs. And I feel like this is the best uh, mastery on her. So timely intervention. When your champions are taking damage, she gains turn meter. And then on the defense tree, we've really just gone for, for um, reduced damage. We've gone for the ultimate uh, mastery in the game, Resurgent, probably the strongest mastery in the game. 50% chance to remove a random debuff when they lose just a quarter of their health. It's ridiculous. Like on, on most boss fights, this is insane. In the arena, this is insane. Uh, it's just such a good skill. And then I've gone for Cycle of Revenge, which just gives us more turn meter when my allies are taking hits. That's mainly an arena ability, but actually works nice in dungeons too. So, um, artifacts then. I've gone in Relentless. 
But honestly, you could go Swift Parry, Relentless, um, Regen Set, Frenzy Set, Reflex. Uh, you could just go straight up Speed. You could go Perception Gear. You could go Stun Gear. So there's a lot of options for her, depending on what you want to do with her. Um, I've got Relentless because I want to cycle round to my Revive ability as quick as I can. Um, honestly, is that the best set? Probably not. Thinking about it, maybe I'd rather have her in, in Reflex Gear, to be honest. But um, there you go. There you go. Reflex Gear, just for those that aren't aware, is it's had a massive buff since you can decide to turn skills off. 40% chance to put something, um, reduce a random skill cooldown. It's probably better than my Relentless Gear, actually. Okay, enough waffling. Let's get her into some content then. So let's show her in a couple of dungeons. Um, yeah, I really feel like she can just jump into any fight. I feel like she can get into any team and just be there as an absolute carry. So her aura is only for Doom Tower, so forget that for now. But if you're running something like a Hiker Toon, a Grush, uh, what else would we want? A Decreased Defense champ. Let's put Phoenix in. Let's put Deacon in maybe as my Decreased Defense. Or we could just go War Maiden. I'll keep Deacon in. Go all epics. Um, now this type of team here, where we've got one defensive champion, we've got a speed booster, we've got someone that can block revive for the adds, we've got someone who's dropping defense. I just feel like it's a walkover. And as I say, on auto, Ursula is going to increase your defense. See this? So she's done a revive ability before she's done her increase attack and decrease enemy attack ability. So if I was setting her AI, I think I would switch it. I think I would go for um, her to use her A2 first and then cycle around to her A3 after. But, you know, up to you really. Either way, it was not bad for us because we got some defensive champions and we got some offensive champions. You see here, she's hitting for 7k. She's not a hitter. She's, she's in the like bottom 50% of damage dealers in the game with both of her skills. So... Don't worry too much about damage. You see here, decrease attack on them, increase attack on us. And we're just going to pump round to get our abilities away. We had our f um, block buffs out there for the enemy, so they're not going to do their, their reflect damage. And honestly, she is just a super strong carry. She's an absolute carry. It feels like... I can't imagine an area of the game where she's not just going to help you complete it if you've not done it yet. She's not going to speed you up so much. It's more about just keeping you alive. So we're dropping turn meter with her A1 for, um, for the mastery, but plus her A1 does it anyway. And then I feel like this team is just going to walk through this now pretty comfortably. We want for Phoenix to get his... Um, Block revive away on the ads. That's the only way this is going to kind of speed up. We get a strengthen up. Strengthen up against this boss is one of the strongest things you can do because his hit when he's got ads up ignores your defense. So if there's one ad up, it'll ignore fifty percent. If they're both up, hundred percent. So strengthen doesn't care about that. It's like straight up, we're reducing your damage by twenty five percent. Straight up. There's no there's no arguing about it, Mister Ice Golem. That's what's going down today. Um, and then obviously this team here is just going to kind of walk through it. Phoenix got one block revive already. So because of that, um, he's in trouble. One, one add up here is a, a cakewalk for us. Uh, I've actually got no, <laughs> no accuracy on this Deacon. I just realized that's why we get no decreased defense out there. Um, anyway, Ice Golem done. Let's move on. You can see here it's a cakewalk. We've not had to use the revive part of the skill. We've just been using the skill as an increased defense and strength and buff, which... If that's, what, if that's all it was, it's still awesome, by the way. The revive's like uh, absolutely like awesome element to it. But Ice Golem, she rocks in. Let's perhaps go for... Um, let's go for Dragon Team. Okay, I'm trying to make sure we've got a team that's going to be in trouble by the time we get to the boss. So this feels like it should be in trouble at some point in the game. So what we've got, we've got drop defense from our, our War Maiden. She's actually a bit slow, but there's the drop defense. We've got the Provoke coming in from our um, Null Horn. He's an absolute beast of a champion. I love this champion. One of my favorite uh, rares. And basically, Kale's our damage dealer. 
Everyone else is in there to support Kale's damage. I've got my uh, Null Horn in a Frost set, by the way. That's why these, these freezes are coming up. It's actually procced a ton of times. And it's going to be a slow and steady. But, again, we've got increased attack for our damage dealers. And we've got increased defense and strengthen just to help us stay alive. I'll get us on to the actual boss part of the fight. So I don't think we've got any trouble at this stage. And uh, see how we get on there. I think it's worth saying this is a good example of team comp is worth more than um, than champions in a sense. So we've got a provoke an unkillable null horn doesn't do any damage, but nobody really hits any of our squishy champions. We've got a drop defense champ um, champion in a stun set. We've got a kale who's really not built very well, and we're just kind of like little by little taking them down. They've got decreased attack on them. They've got decreased defense on them which means that they can't really do a ton of damage to us. So the team comp is really solid, even though it's just a bunch of rares and Ursala. Yeah, my Great Hall helps. All blah, you know, I know there's going to be messages, but you're, you're Great Hall. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I know that. But it's still a solid team comp, which is why we're winning this fight, not because of my Great Hall. That helps. So you get to the dragon. I just want to see if we actually take... Because of strength and an increased defense, it's really hard for us to even lose a member of our team in dungeons. Look how little the damage comes in from that dragon hit. And honestly, these, these champions are not built with like stack defense, anything like that. Strength and increased defense massively reduces the damage that we take. And at this stage, you basically, as long as she stays alive, I think we just win the fight. Poisons from our Kale, that's what's going to do the damage to the, the dragon. Nothing else is really doing a lot. Lovely that Apothecary is deciding to heal Ursala. Does he realize she's actually useful here? I don't know. And we're, we're taking some damage. Like, we've got no healers in here. Apothecary is the only person who's doing any sort of healing at all. But at three turn, um, uh, increased defense and strength is just coming up real nice. So all of this poison is going to do a chunk of damage. It's going to be right down here. And it looks like we're not going to need the revive because we've got strength from back up again. Because of lasting gifts, it's actually going on for four turns on a lot of people. It's just, like, gross. So yeah, you can put a really with a whole bunch of average champions. As long as they're in reasonable gear and it's a reasonable team comp, I think you kind of walk through a lot of content with this champion. Uh, I've just started a free-to-play account. I started yesterday. If I could get her, I can't. If I could, she would be an absolute carry for any of my teams as I'm progressing through the game. So I think good job playing for putting her on, um, on special, should we call it. So yeah, dragon done. Let's move on to some Doom Tower stuff. Look, can she do finite? Yeah, but she doesn't have any multi hits. So she's just going to literally be a carry. Um, can she do spider? Same thing, really. Spider, she's probably less effective. She's going to decrease the attack of the enemy spider, uh, spiderlings, which will reduce the damage that they do to you. And she's going to increase the attack of your team. But otherwise, you know, the strength and increased defense, it's just going to reduce the damage you take. It's not particularly special for spider. So let's get into Doom Tower, which I think is one area that she's going to be really solid in. We think about fights, Magma Dragon, perfect. Like, all you're looking for there is sustain and provokes. And then over time, you just kill this dragon. So I think she's fine here. Never spider. She's not going to stop any of the poison coming at you. She will reduce the damage that's coming into you. So against bosses like the griffin and the dragon, I think we throw out a lot of buffs for the griffin. So unless you're completely manual in that fight, I think you probably feed him too many buffs. So manual the fight, she could be good. But on also, I think she's going to be too reckless. Against the dragon, I think her cooldown on her revive ability is just too long. So you'd have to build her in more like a resistance build to deal with that. Um, but otherwise, she could be solid here with a resistance build. I think she'd be solid against the dragon. Um, yeah, really solid, actually. I think she'd be really good with a resistance build here. So I don't know. Let's pick some random wave. Um, let's put her in. So what we've got here, anything too crazy? Probably not. So she's going to come in, speed lead, bam. Um, we're going to want someone to drop defense as ever. So a lot of green, affinity, and red. So let's take a stag. 
who's neutral or positive here. Um, we're going to want someone for damage. So let's grab a skull crown. Maybe I'll bring our sister along as well, Sinatia. And then we're going to bring in Seal for stunnage. So what's she doing here? She's just protecting. She's increasing the attack of our offense. She's increasing the defense um, for our defense. She's strength and buffing. All of that good stuff. She's decreasing their attack, which is really nice as well. And then obviously, um, everyone else in here is basically in here for control and damage. The two things together. I've got a stun set on Tenacia. I've got a stun set on Skull Crown. Because if you don't have Seer to clean uh, the waves off, then they're hard. They're really hard when you get to higher level of Doom Tower. But you can see we're kind of stunning up just about everybody. And I think this is one of her best spots. Okay. Um, I think lastly, I can't show you Faction Wars today. It's not open. In Faction Wars, she's a goddess. She's one of the best in the faction to help you clear Faction Wars for sure. Like, she is probably the best champion in the faction if you're struggling for Faction Wars. Um, you can see this team is just going to crew through this. But the other place to show her is Arena. And Arena is one of the other places where she's really good. So if I was playing her in Arena, honestly, I would, I've changed her gear anyway, but I would swap her out to be in Swift Parry if I was doing like a more an, a, a solid endgame build because she is still squishy. You do need her to stay alive to be able to get this off. So Swift Parry just gives you that extra chance to get that ability away. Um, or I would run her in something like Frenzy Gear so that she boosts her turn meter forward and gets her abilities away nice and early. But what I've done here is a higher resistance build now. So I've got a resistance chest on. Um, I've got a resistance banner on. And I've got resistance rolls pretty much running through my gear. Which means that we've got a reasonable chance of resisting anyone who is on an off build. Uh, like a secondary build. So when we're talking about that kind of like 450 resistance level. We resist people that are built to do two jobs yeah so we won't resist a madame if they're built properly we might resist though someone like a morley morley's probably built as like a tank with some accuracy not enough probably to grab my um a provoke off on my ursala we might resist someone like a um a child a tormund so someone who's doing like a double role let's try this team here Somebody who's doing like a double roll like this, we might get the resists off against a team like this. So she's really strong in a go second team. That's where I think, or a defensive team. And that's what I'm trying to show here. Kandrafon is our win condition. She boosts his attack. And boosting his attack is really important. See how many resists I'm getting here? A whole ton of resists going off. Because everyone that we're up against is kind of built with an, a reasonable amount of accuracy. Not a ton, a reasonable amount. The only trouble with this type of build is she's still kind of squishy. Because I've replaced her defense chest with a resistance chest, she's still kind of becoming the target. And because she's becoming the target, it's very difficult to get the mainstay of her abilities away, which are the strength and increased defense, etc. So you you end up in a lot of you end up in a bit of trouble, I guess. Are we gonna win this one? Probably not. Probably not. So you both want her to be the last person alive to revive and you want her to be able to resist stuff. And honestly, that build's kind of difficult when she's got quite a, quite a squishy defense. Let's try this team here. So they're provoking up my Vogue off here. Got the drop defense. I didn't have enough to deal with that. But we now start to get Kandrafon away, hopefully. Maybe I just need to build her a bit quicker, to be honest. Kandrafon's got a bit of an ability away. I've turned off his A3 because A3 is dumb on him. Oh, come on. There we go. He's got strength and away. We're in a good position now to win, actually. Believe it or not, just, just that, getting that ability away there is enough to give us a good chance to win. I should build her a bit faster. So A1 away there. He hides himself behind his veil. As long as we can get his A2 away next, which I think should be coming up, then we should be able to win on the next hit. So go second teams are kind of hard to build. 
Um, and there we go, bam. They're kind of hard to build. They're everything stacked against you. So let's go for one more. Uh, maybe we go for this one. But yeah, do I think this team's going to win tons of fights? Probably not. Go second teams are just hard to run with anyway. But I think she gives us a chance as a go second champion. So if you're struggling in the arena, you know, she's giving you your chance at a revive, chance of um, decreasing an enemy's attack. That was actually quite a quick one. So let's go for one more. And yeah, and basically she gives you that chance. So look, if I, um, if I was to give you some advice, if you can go ahead and get her for 15 void shards, if you've got those shards, I think she's a solid addition to a roster. Certainly super cool for faction wars and you know some waves of Doom Tower and stuff like that. And I think you'll probably use her. I think most people that play the game will use her a ton. Honestly do. So there you go. That is Ursula the Mourner. Good luck if you're going for her, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.